What's going on guys? Um, I've been saying for about a month now that uh, for Christmas I had a big surprise for you guys but partially because I'm really really excited about it partially because I really really can't wait anymore and partially because we are 57 minutes into my birthday and I don't feel like waiting anymore I'm gonna do it tonight. This is the fantasy booking of Jeff Hardy versus CM Punk for WrestleMania 29. <laughs> so yeah, anybody who wants to call me a punk bandwagon fan can hop off the video now. Anybody who wants to hate on me for a Hardy being a Hardy fan can hop off the video now. And the rest of you are along for the ride as of now. Now the first thing you're saying to me is spaz. How could Jeff Hardy and CM Punk fight each other at WrestleMania? Jeff Hardy's in TNA. Well, I'll handle Jeff Hardy first, and TNA actually helped me out with this. They've made, already, for next January, uh, Robbie Roode versus Jeff Hardy for the TNA belt. Now, from there, my story begins. From there, obviously, Jeff Hardy wins the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Comes in the next, uh, the next night on Impact, says, you know, guys... Thanks for all the support. Thank you for welcoming me back with open arms. I'm going to be the fightingest champion TNA has ever seen, and I'm going to prove that this is the most important belt in the company, and I am the only person fit to hold it. Now, a lot of heels come down. Kurt Angle comes down. You know, Desmond Wolf comes down. Uh, you know, all the guys from the world come down. So what, what sets you apart? What makes you the best champion? What makes you the most fighting champion ever? Um... Jeff Hardy says, not only will I defend this belt every impact, every time you crown another champion, be it a U.S., or, wow, U.S., be it the, uh, the global championship, the TV championship, the uh, tag team championships, whatever, I will defend my title, not only against all comers, I will defend my title against any other champions in this company to prove that I am the best and this title represents that I am the best. He then proceeds to do so over the next several, several months. Um, takes on every uh, TV champion they've got, takes on every X Division champion they've got every time the belt changes hands, takes on every set of tag team champions they get in handicap matches and deals with them all in proper fashion. Also has for his own belt great renewed rivalries with Sting, great renewed rivalries with Rob Van Dam to settle their old scores. You know, Daniels, Styles, um, Sting... You know, Flair will come back for one match. You know, all the young ones like Gunner and Matt Morgan will all have their turn in queue, in line, to fight Jeff Hardy for this championship. Get to a year from now. Get to the following December. Get to final resolution again. Jeff Hardy comes out the the impact before uh, final resolution next year and says, I've got nothing else to prove. There's only one thing I've ever really wanted, and that's a rematch with Kurt Angle. Now, I stuck Kurt Angle in here only because I love Jeff Hardy and Kurt Angle's matches from a while ago, the ones that never ended properly. And uh, so Kurt Angle would come out and heal up and da-da-da-da-da and have this big epiphany. They're going to have this big respectful match at Final Resolution. Now, Jeff Hardy would dominate Kurt Angle, and I know that would piss off a lot of people. Jeff Hardy would dominate Kurt Angle through this entire match. He would hit him with the twist of fate. He would hit him with the swanton bomb. Kurt Angle would be hanging on within an inch of his life, you know, dead meat for being pinned. Jeff Hardy would go for the pin, pull him up after two, go out into the crowd, grab a chair, grab a, a stick, a hammer, whatever he can, and bludgeon the living shit out of Kurt Angle. Kick him out of the ring. Wait for, you know, Sting and Dixie Carter and Jeff Jarrett to come down and say, What the hell are you doing? What are you doing? This is our company. This is the last pay-per-view of the year. Da, 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 da. And he would cut the most glorious heel rebound promo ever about how when he had all his issues, nobody turned on him. He had to fight his way back and nobody believed in him when he came back. And then he would turn his attention to the crowd, laugh at the crowd in great heel hearty fashion and say, look at you all. Look at how, how so many of you turned your backs on me. I wanted to prove to all you sheep that I could make you cheer me one more time before I said, fuck you. And then he would take the belt, the TNA belt, and leave TNA for good. 
Now, that covers Jeff Hardy. In WWE, I would develop a major, major beef more than there already is between John Laurinaitis and Triple H. It would be revealed that John Laurinaitis has actually been acting on the, you know, the whims of Vince McMahon throughout the year. Everything would be debated between Triple H, John Laurinaitis, and Vince McMahon. Eventually, midway through the year, maybe SummerSlam, there would be a ridiculous triple threat match between Johnny Ace, Vinnie Mac, and Triple H. Triple H would obviously come out on top. They would be done. Triple H would then expand the company more than it has ever been expanded before. He would bring in, you know, people from OVW. He would bring in the people from ROH. He would bring in the people from FCW that we want to see. And things would grow and things would go good. The only problem would be that WrestleMania that's coming up in just a few months would turn a lot of heads. Randy Orton would be resentful that he's not in the main event. The Rock would beat John Cena and that would piss John Cena off. They would team up they would both have simultaneous massive heel turns and grab back their two world championships from the respective young guns that hold them right now in CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. They would run rampant over Raw and SmackDown and everybody would hate them. Triple H would introduce at the beginning of 2013 a new concept for the Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble would be, again, 40 men, but it would not be over the top rope. It would not be elimination. Elimination would happen by pinfall only, and the one match would take up the whole pay-per-view. It would be considered, by wrestling fans, one of the most risky moves ever made in the WWE. Now, CM Punk would start at number one, work his way through 43 other guys, still be standing there waiting for his last opponent, when lo and behold, who springs out of the crowd and clocks him, knocks him out clean, then Jeff Hardy with the TNA belt, runs in, clocks him one time out of nowhere with the TNA belt, leaves him laying in the middle of the ring. Number. 45 would be Christian <laughs> with a smarmy smirky look on his face he would walk into the ring put his foot on CM Punk get that last and final pin and earn himself a spot in the 2013 Wrestlemania Wrestlemania 29 now John Cena still has his belt Randy Orton still has his belt going into the next night's Monday Night Raw CM Punk goes ape shit on Triple H says you gotta find me Jeff Hardy you gotta find me Jeff Hardy I gotta get my revenge on Jeff Hardy Triple H would come out try to uh try to contain the situation and say, look, point blank, I can't have you assaulting people that don't, you know, don't work for the company. It's going to look bad for the company. It's going to look bad for me. You're going to get yourself arrested, etc. But I have a consolation prize for you. I'm sick of John Cena and I'm sick of Randy Orton. I'm going to send you to No Way Out to fight them in a triple threat match for the unified, universal, undisputed WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And he says, that's fine, but you better find me Hardy. Next couple of weeks, there's, you know, random run-ins from the street, random run-ins from the crowd, from Punk, so that, so or sorry, from Hardy, so that Punk is in absolutely no condition whatsoever for the triple threat match. The night, the Monday Night Raw, before No Way Out, Triple H comes back, confronts Punk in the ring, says, you've got what you wanted. Even though it's going to hurt the company and the credibility of the Royal Rumble, you have what you wanted. So CM Punk celebrates, he salivates at the chance to get his hands on Jeff Hardy, but he says, how does this hurt the company? Triple H would then inform him, the only way that I could get him signed to a contract to fight you in one of our rings is I had to make Christian put up his number one contendership at WrestleMania at No Way Out, and you can't touch him. You can't, part you can't interfere in the match. So we would go into No Way Out. Now, obviously, Jeff Hardy would smoke the living shit out of Christian. That's a given. He becomes the new number one contender for the undisputed WWE World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania. Now we have the triple threat match. Triple threat match is dominated by Cena and Orton because they're in pristine condition and Punk's been taking beatdowns for weeks now. Gets to the point where Punk and Orton could get the victory. In comes Hardy. Chair shot to Cena chair shot to Orton, 
pulls a lifeless CM Punk over one of them, Punk gets the pin. Punk is the new champion, but he can't be proud of it because he didn't win it of his own volition. So he walks in the next night on Monday Night Raw, bitching, whining, complaining, wanting to hand the belt back to Triple H because he didn't win it properly and he knows it. But he's interrupted by Hardy who says, no, for better or for worse, you're the champion and we've got a date at WrestleMania. You can't touch me until then. And for the next few weeks, you know, one jumps the other, one jumps the other with Triple H constantly saying, look, if you guys don't calm down, if you guys don't cut it out, if you guys don't respect my authority, you're going to regret it. Uh, Jeff Hardy, two weeks before... Uh, Jeff Hardy, two weeks before WrestleMania, jumps Punk one final time and says, and Triple H finally has to say, look, I'm going to announce what the consequences are, and Hardy, and you're not going to like it. Comes in next week, brings them both down to the ring, says, your match at WrestleMania for the undisputed WWE World Heavyweight Championship is going to be a ladder match. Now, CM Punk starts laughing his ass off in pure cocky, you know, pipe bomb form and Tr Jeff Hardy looks at him and says how can you laugh how can you this and that and the next thing how can you think that's funny I am the master of the ladder match punk would look him square in the face and say yeah I'm the one that won money in the bank twice I've took on five other guys eight other guys nine other guys and came out on top what can just you do you are just one man and that's when the lights would go out that's when we would hear the rustling and the bustling in the crowd and one after the next after the next after the next person would emerge from the crowd silently strongly a mass around the outside of the ring all a little corny but all in the matching Jeff Hardy helmets all in Jeff Hardy you know armbands and Jeff Hardy you know, t-shirts and, and gimmicks and stuff like this, so that they all basically look like a Jeff Hardy clone army. And Jeff Hardy, all Jeff Hardy says to CM Punk is, I can't touch you until WrestleMania, but make no mistake, I am never alone. I always have my creatures of the night. One of them comes in, whips off the helmet, and hugs Jeff, and isn't it Matt? Helmets come off one by one. Lita, Edge, Christian... Jesse Neal, Shannon Moore, Toxine, Rhino, um, who else? Hurricane Helms, RVD, Kaz, AJ Styles, um, Samoa Joe, um, all these guys pile into the ring one by one. And the final two people to come in, take off their helmets, are they not Luke Gallows and Serena? And, you know, Johnny Nitro, or... Joey Mercury, rather. They apologize to Punk. They go to shake his hand. And the beatdown commences. Jeff Hardy perches himself on the top turnbuckle as his minions go to work. After all that is said and done, he salutes them all, he high-fives them all, and orders them all out of the ring. Cre crouches over Punk, sticks a cigarette in his mouth, pours a beer all over him as he's lying there lifeless and whatever, and says, see you at WrestleMania. These two go on to WrestleMania 29 to have the best ladder match in the history of WrestleMania. And yes, CM Punk does come out on top. I'm not going to say Jeff Hardy, even though my heart would say Jeff Hardy. CM Punk comes out on top. Jeff Hardy goes out on his back. It's announced later on that it's his last match, and he's retiring for his own well-being and whatnot and whatever else. Out to present him with the brand new, undisputed WWE World Heavyweight Championship is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Hands him the belt, hands him a bottle of water while he has a beer. They toast, he congratulates him, turns around, gives him a stunner, and says, See you at WrestleMania 30. That's it. That is my WrestleMania 29 CM Punk vs. Jeff Hardy in a ladder match for the undisputed WWE World Heavyweight Championship fantasy booking. I hope you guys have had a lot of fun. This is my holiday gift to you. This is my birthday gift to myself. I will see all you guys in the new year. I thank each and every one of you. And uh, until next time, you know the drill. I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Let me know what you think. And I will talk to you guys all later. I'm tagging out. Bye. Get up, come on, get down.